Nobody wants to see their golden retriever afraid, but there are several things that are not scary to us humans, but are pretty common for goldens to be afraid of. And to make matters worse, if your golden is scared and you don't handle it the right way, you may even make your golden retriever more scared and the fear more permanent. So here are the five most common things goldens are scared of and what you can do to handle them. First up is a trip to the vet. Even though goldens are known for their friendly personalities, the vet can still be a scary experience. Procedures like vaccinations, blood draws, nail trims, and exams can be stressful for your dog. And it makes total sense, right? Being manhandled by a stranger can be pretty confusing and concerning from your dog's perspective. For goldens who already have stranger danger, vet visits might be even scarier. You may see behavior like panting, cowering, freezing up, shaking, or hiding if your dog is scared at the vet. If they're very stressed, they might begin to sweat through their paws or even have a potty accident. Some goldens may growl, snap, or even bite the vet in an attempt to make the procedure stop. It doesn't mean that they're bad or mean, it just means that they're scared. Even dogs who are typically social and affectionate with people might get scared of the vet. And this can start at a young age. Puppies need to go to the vet at least three or four times during the first couple of months home with you. During these visits, they get a series of vaccinations and exams, so for many pups, the vet quickly becomes a negative experience. Vet trips mean painful pokes and weird body handling. For other dogs, they might not have minded the vet until a particularly traumatic experience. Maybe they were in a lot of pain when the vet examined the injured area, and now they associate the vet with that pain. It's also possible for a fear of the vet to pop up later in your golden's life. The bad news is that going to the vet is a necessary part of life for you and your dog. But the good news is that there is a lot you can do to help your dog feel more comfortable and less afraid. If you have a puppy or even an adult golden retriever with a mild fear of the vet, ask your vet office if you can do happy visits. A happy visit is where you bring your dog to the vet for the sole purpose of making it a super positive experience. You can give them lots of delicious treats just for walking through the door, waiting in the lobby, and hanging out in the exam room. The vet techs can even give your pup some treats to help show your dog that these are nice people. If your dog has some favorite toys, you can bring those in and play some games while at the vet too. These happy visits can help combat the notion that the vet is always a scary, terrible place to go. It's also helpful to bring along some tasty snacks to your real vet visits to help bring some of those happy feelings to actual appointments. Cheese and meat are usually popular with golden retrievers, but things like spray cheese or a jar of baby food can be great for them to lick during an exam or shot. For dogs who have higher levels of stress at the vet, consider talking to your vet about anti-anxiety medication. You might not want to give your dog meds, but sometimes treats and toys just won't cut it. Medication can be very helpful for dogs who don't even want to go inside of the building, who really shut down or panic while they're inside, or dogs that show fear or aggression to the veterinary staff. It can even be good for dogs who show lower levels of stress as a way to prevent that fear from escalating over time. A lot of people are resistant to giving anti-anxiety meds to dogs, but it can be a huge upgrade in quality of life for them. Another common thing that scares golden retrievers is loud sounds like thunder, fireworks, smoke alarms, or the vacuum. Sound sensitivity might show up as fear of one specific sound, or it may be more generalized to all loud or weird noises. This is a natural evolutionary response as a sudden noise might indicate a potential threat. Even we humans jump at loud noises. But for some dogs, this response can really escalate into fear or even anxiety. The sound makes the dog feel unsafe, and you may see behavior like heavy panting, pacing, hiding, shaking, or trying to escape. Dealing with sound sensitivity can be tough for both you and your golden retriever, but there are some strategies you can use to help them. The first thing is to try as best as you can to avoid exposing your dog to sounds that will freak them out. For example, if they panic when they hear the garbage truck, then don't take them out for a walk when the truck is likely to come around your area. Maybe you play some white noise or calming music to help drown out the sound of the garbage truck until it passes. If you need to use the vacuum, but you know that's going to trigger your dog, you can have a family member take them on a walk or put them in the yard with something to chew on while you clean. Those are the first steps. Then you can start to gradually expose your dog to low levels of the sound that aren't going to scare them. 
This is called desensitization. You can combine this with something called counter conditioning, where you pair something your dog really likes with the concerning sound. Here's how it might look. Have a family member start the vacuum at one end of the house behind a closed door while you feed your dog some delicious bites of chicken. The sound starts to predict amazing things rather than just being a scary noise. But here's something you need to be careful about. The level of sound needs to be low enough that your dog isn't going to freak out. They should notice the sound, but still be able to easily eat and engage with you. Then you can slowly up the intensity of the sound if your dog looks like they're comfortable. For sounds that are out of your control, like thunder or fireworks, here are a few options. If your dog has mild stress during storms or fireworks, you can try pairing the sounds with some delicious treats. Every time the sound happens, amazing food rains from the sky. This can help your dog develop a more positive association with the sound. You could also try giving your dog a stuffed Kong or a bully stick to chew. This can distract them from the sounds a bit, and chewing is a natural de-stressor for dogs. But if your dog is too stressed to eat, the strategy won't work. In this case, you might want to talk to your veterinarian about medication that can help ease your dog's worries during a storm. Before we get into the next point, let's bust a big myth about scared dogs. It is perfectly okay to comfort your dog if they're afraid of a sound. Some people think that comforting your dog will reinforce their fear and make it worse, but that's not true. In fact, showing them some love can help ease their fear and make them feel better about the situation. And here's a little fear you might have, bringing home a new golden retriever puppy. It's a hectic time with lots of pressure on you as a new puppy parent, but our golden retriever puppy handbook has a game plan for the first 30 days for you and your new pup. I'll drop a link to it down in the description. Okay, we mentioned some goldens are scared of getting their nails trimmed earlier, but let's talk about it in more depth because this is a huge trigger for so many golden retrievers. Many goldens will run away and hide at the first sight of the nail clippers. They might pull their paws away or even growl, snap, or bite you if you try to trim their nails. It's so common, but it can cause a lot of stress for both you and your dog. And to further complicate things, keeping your golden's nails at a good length is important for their health. Nails that are too long are at greater risk of splitting or snagging on things and tearing. Long nails can also damage your dog's joints and ligaments because it changes the way they stand and walk. So why do so many Goldens hate nail trims? We can't read their minds, but it's safe to assume that it feels uncomfortable for them. They might not like having their paws handled, and the feeling of the clippers or dremel on their nails probably isn't too fun either. Of course, your dog doesn't understand why their nails should be clipped. All they know is that it feels weird or painful and they don't like it. Also, if you've accidentally trimmed the nail too short and cut into the nail's vein, this can be very painful for your dog. Unfortunately, this might make them more fearful of having their nails done the next time. So what can you do about this? If your dog desperately needs a nail trim, but you can't do it because of how freaked out they are, the best thing you can do is to have your vet do it for you under sedation or medication. By sedating or medicating your dog, they won't be traumatized during the procedure. This is important because if you try to push through and trim your dog's nails, even if they're panicked, you'll likely make their fear even worse. And then the next time you try it, they'll hate it even more. So while sedation or medication might seem extreme, for some dogs, it's the only way to go. This will get your dog's nails back to a good, healthy length without mentally scarring your dog, and then you can work on implementing some of these other strategies. Now, a great way to keep your dog's nails short is by using a scratch board. This is essentially a giant nail file. With a little training, you can easily train your dog to dig on the scratch board and file their own nails down. It can be helpful to use a scratch board to maintain a good nail length while you work on teaching your dog to have their nails clipped or dremeled in a cooperative way. I'll drop a link to a scratch board down in the description for you. You can also use desensitization and counter conditioning to change your dog's feelings and behavior during nail trims. The key is to go at your dog's pace and to not try to rush them. This might mean moving really slow if your dog already has a strong, negative feeling about having their feet and their nails handled. You might start by simply taking the clippers out of the drawer, and when your dog looks at them, you scatter some shredded cheese on the ground. When your dog starts to perk up when they hear the clippers coming out of the drawer, then maybe you hold the clippers out towards your dog a few inches and then scatter the cheese. You can slowly work all the way up to touching the nail clippers to your dog's body, then their paws, then their nails, and eventually actually clipping a nail. This can be a long process, 
and getting help from a trainer who specializes in what's known as cooperative care can be very helpful. If you have a golden retriever puppy, you can prevent a fear of nail trims by working on desensitization and counter conditioning right from the get-go. Making nail trims a low-stress, positive experience for your puppy will set you up for a lifetime of easy nail care. This next fear is a weird one, because some Goldens love it, while others are terrified, and that is riding in the car. It can be the sound of the vehicle, the sensation of the ride, or the feeling of car sickness that freaks them out. Common signs of fear of the car include not wanting to get in, panting heavily, pacing and restlessness, whining or freezing up. If your dog drools or throws up in the car, then you might want to talk to your vet about medication for car sickness. Dogs who get car sick often develop a fear of the car very quickly because they associate the car with feeling sick and they want to avoid that yucky feeling. For dogs who have a strong fear of the car, anti-anxiety medication from your vet can also be helpful in lowering their overall stress so that they can learn that the car isn't so bad. Again, they don't have to always be on medication, but it could be helpful as you start to teach them that the car is not scary. If your dog struggles with getting in and out of your car, try purchasing a dog ramp to make getting their body in and out easier. Teach them how to use the ramp away from the car first using lots of treats. Then bring the ramp to the car and reward them heavily for going up and down the ramp. You can also use desensitization and counter conditioning to change your dog's feelings about being in the car. Start with simply sitting the car with it off and feeding your dog some special treats. Then you might add in turning the key halfway so the sound of air conditioning is on. If that's going well, you might start the car, but keep it stationary. And then you could build up to backing the car out a few feet. Taking lots of short trips to fun places can also help the car take on a more positive association. In case you haven't noticed the theme, one of the best ways to help your golden get over their fears is through baby steps. And if you want to take a baby step in our relationship, I'd love it if you would subscribe so you can hear about our future videos. Now for some goldens, this next thing is about the absolute scariest thing that could ever happen. It's being left home alone. Separation anxiety is not uncommon with golden retrievers, and it can make both you and your dog's life really hard. Separation anxiety is an intense fear of being home by themselves, and it's definitely an issue for which you'll want to get professional help. Dogs don't usually grow out of separation anxiety, and it often becomes worse over time if it's not properly handled. If your dog has true separation anxiety, quick fix solutions like giving your dog a Kong before you leave won't help you truly solve it. But the good news here is that working with a professional can help you learn how to teach your golden to be comfortable with being home alone. You know that some Goldens hate when you leave them home, but if you want to see what other things Golden Retrievers hate that humans do, watch this video next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.